there's been a lot of cool content recently that my algorithm has filled with, which is around all the use cases for the new AI models. And I've been loving using these tools for the business and the sports betting. And I thought it would be a cool idea to create a series, I'm not really sure where this is going to go, but to kind of showcase how you can use these things in a quite a low key, less popular way than the trendy micro SaaS builds or front end things that actually have basically a lot more utility to make money straight away um, with something like trading, betting, exchanges, anything like that. So we're going to kind of do one episode now. I'm going to run through some basics and then I'm going to just do a live example of a sport and we're going to just run maybe an hour a day and see how long it takes for us to get that example sport from absolutely nothing and zero knowledge even to a profitable betting model, which, you know, scrapes everything, runs predictions itself and generates a half decent ROI. Then we'll get onto how to get money down and everything like that. Not sure how long this series will be, but I think people will find it interesting as a kind of like a new use case for all these cool tools that are coming out and learning about them in the meantime. First one I'm going to run through is just the best models and how to use them. So obviously with these, we have a bunch of things. We have ChatGPT, um, we have Claude, which is anthropic, which I'm not going to try and spell. Then you've got like some secondary sort of ones like Llama, Rock, um, anything like that. Perplexity is not really relevant to this conversation because that's more of a search based model. Whereas we're looking for the best ones that can have deep thinking. Um, you have DeepSeek as well and all of the new ones, Manus, although that's not really existing at the moment just because the amount of server issues they're having. Um, so that's pretty much it. Now, for betting sports and just modeling, coding in general, the new Claw 3.7 is miles ahead of anything else. And also it's, I think, $20 a month or £15 a month, something like that. So you can get a few accounts of this or use something called Open Router and basically have unlimited access. But for now, we're just going to assume you have one or two Claude accounts and you have the top version. If you can't really invest like $40, $50 a month to this, then obviously this is not the endeavor for you. Now, how I do this is I'll explain in a future video, but essentially you need to learn how to actually backtest properly how to scrape data and then you have to actually learn how to build an edge so within our sport we can't just say to claude or any of these ai models build me a sports betting model right even if we go over here so this is claude for anybody wondering you have a few different options now you have claude 3.7 sonnet which is pretty much like the industry standard and you have this extended mode which as you can see best for math and coding challenges this is pretty hefty, to be honest, unless you're trying to build actual code from scratch or models or changing models. This is not going to be needed to start. But the problem is you can't switch in chat. OK, so let's say I said here, um, hey, can you build a sports betting model for NFL? This is like the stupidest way to do this, because even on their approach, you can see that they've gone away and started building it already. This is what a lot of the like non-specific knowledge is the terminology I use of people talking about AI when it comes to sports betting at the moment. The people who are winning with this are the people who had good sports betting models a decade ago, or in our case, five years ago, and then have used this to just make them five, ten percent better, or you know, fifty percent better in some cases. This approach is just not going to work. So you can see it's writing out all of these things, but in reality, this is just not the way to go. Because A, unless you're technical, you don't know what this does already. Like you don't even know what SK Learn is. You don't even know what, like I don't even know what my problem live is in here. You can see that we have some features, but where do you get those features from? Like it's just stupid, okay? So this is not the approach, but you can see the power of, if we asked it something very, very niche. So if we go to a new chat, let's use the extended one for this one. And can you build out the mechanism for rating a 
cornerback in the NFL based on the data we have, such as total yards, the receiver they were covering, which adjusts based on receiver in question. That'll do. Um, plus the information around quality of position, strength of schedule, recency, decay, and you know, we can say anything else, right? Let's just say quarterback and coaching. Who came today? So now you can see we've got something that is very specific to one thing, one position in the NFL. Obviously, we're not going to start with NFL. If anybody's trying to build a public model like this for NFL, you can just go ahead and ignore them because the NFL is a very sharp league. So the amount of money you can get down on an NFL game versus any other market is substantial. So if you can risk millions of pounds or dollars per bet and somebody like me or anybody else is saying they have a profitable model that does 5% plus ROI on game day, they are either naive or lying to you or themselves. But you get the idea here. So we're looking to create a player-based rating system or approach based on the data we have, which is something you always need to tell it. Um, and then with some ideas around uh, game state, coaching, quarterback, etc. Now, whatever this comes back with is not going to be relevant to us, but this is just to give you an example. So we have the, the thought process, right? And you can see how this is a little bit different in the approach, but we're also giving it enough things to work with. So now it's coming up with some ideas, coverage efficiency. Okay, CE, sure. Then we have some stats here where blah, blah, blah. So as long as we have these in, we can go away and build them. Quality of opponent adjustment, sure, again. And then these, et cetera, et cetera. So then it gives us a rating system as well. Gives us some information here. So now if we had all of this data, we could work towards plugging this in in the correct way, right? But for some reason, it hasn't given us the code, but then we can ask it to code all of this into a model. And we would basically give it these stats and go from there. So you can see this is a lot more powerful approach, but you would want to do it in segments. This is why Claude is a lot better model than all of these here. There's a couple of more things I wanted to explain as well. This website, which is called the Replit, is also really good for anybody who's beginner friendly. Like I'm not a coder. I only started using these AI tools fairly recently, maybe six months ago, but they've enabled me to essentially be a developer straight off the bat. Um, this is their you know, AI LLM version, but if you go to create app, Python, and then you can do anything you want, let's say, um, Example script, we can basically run this, create this app here, and we get a framework that we can work with. Get rid of assistant, move this over. So you can see we have this main.py, and we can put all of our code in here. So if we come back across here and we say, can you build a super simple script for this? It's going to come and build that out for us, and it's going to tell us what it needs our data inputs to be but we can also add any files here, upload files. So if we have some JSON, we could be call this cornerback data.json, and then we can reference this in our code here. Okay, now JSON is just like a data format, but without getting too in depth, you can just kind of see the power of these tools straight away. Now, all of this would never be enough to make a model, but it's just an example I'm showing. So once you have the model, you basically need to learn how to backtest and how to scrape. I like using this tool here, Replit, for this because we can build the scraper into the model itself and then we can simply run that individual code for anything, right? So if we have like a file here, that's um, scraper.py and then this would go away, scrape the specific website that we're using to collect the data. You can have another code that converts that as well. So call it converter.py. So then that scraped data gets uploaded as, let's just have another day, another, another example here. I'm oh, sorry, this wouldn't be this. So this would be something like data.json. And then this converter that we can build, again, with Claude and these AI models, 
will then go ahead and convert that data into a usable format, such as quote back data, right? So that's how we kind of keep everything together without getting too complex. Now, there is a way you can do this in something called Lovable. So if you want to make this look nice and deploy it, you can actually do this here. Now, to be honest, it's not really worth doing if you want to have a private model, but if you want to build anything publicly in the future that you deploy, it does help to do this in something like Lovable. This is a cool tool to play around with as well, because you can literally make websites in seconds or apps or you know any sort of SaaS product. So it's cool to have a play around with, but for the purpose of this, it's not too relevant for us. So scraping is what we're going to get to in the next video, because you need to actually create the data. So you need to understand what you're scraping and where you're trying to get data from. And then there's also some custom scrape analysis. This is like super high level, so we probably won't get into this next, but now we're going to do like a live example of what sport to actually bet. Now we bet a few sports already, so I'm not going to choose anything we've bet in the past or created models for because I'm going to have some biases around how to do that, whether correctly or incorrectly. So I'm rather going to just pick something that we don't bet that has medium competition and volume. So when I say competition, this is related to liquidity. So for example, if you built an NFL model or a EPL, so that's UK Premier League, essentially, you can get infinite money down on those bets, right? The issue is, let me just show you an example of this. So some websites that are good are going to show you the max bet for your specific sport. So if we go into Bookmaker, for example, we have a look at the NHL. You can see that we've got all our lines here, really good lines. Um, if we go here, we can see our max bet. It's about 10 grand, okay? If we go to a different hockey league, let's go Austria, Austria you can see that our max bet is 230 here, and it's actually 80 or 77. I know that because we do a lot of European hockey. And when it's 80 as your max risk, it's almost not worth building a model for this. Now, you can actually make some decent money because these markets are very, very soft. So what I mean by soft is this is kind of the opposite of um, the NFL. So if I say here, super soft markets. So this is basically anything that has very low liquidity, um, with very high opportunity for ROI, so high ROI. But your main issue is going to be things like getting the data. It's going to be things like getting down actual volume. Because if you bet seventy dollar, uh, seventy pounds or dollars here or whatever, this market is going to actually go down quite quickly. So this is going to go from plus two twenty down to maybe plus one eighty in a couple of clicks. So you're only going to get a small amount of value. So what we want to do is we want to have something that's not the NFL not the EPL, nothing like MLB, nothing like NBA, because these are all too competitive, right? We want to pick something that is in the middle of these. We don't want to have this issue either, because we want to make a few grand a month. We don't want to have like max bets of 100, 200, even 500, really. We want to be looking for at least $500 per bet. So if we have a look at Finn Hockey, for example, you can see this is a little bit better. We've got 220. So if you imagine we have 10 websites that we can bet around 200 pounds or dollars on, in reality, this increases before game time because this is the 18th. We're currently on the 17th. Just to put this into perspective, 17th. So that's the main issue there. Whereas if we have a look at something like tennis, you can see or even qualifier events should be a fair bit higher. So you can see mask the max risk 700 pounds and then 2k here because this is always based on their max liability of the book so 700 pounds is basically to profit whatever this number is so that's the max liability okay we've got loads of sports here and you can pretty much bet anything you want but i want to choose something that has good liquidity but isn't going to be in this top band okay so there's a few ideas that I have, 
and we'll say, okay, there's a few options, right? We can either do something like basketball that's not NBA or NCAA B. Now, the issue with that is more going to be around which league to do, and also is there enough liquidity in that league? I don't really want to do basketball. It's just a personal preference. I'm not really too keen on it. I want to do something that I at least somewhat understand and has somewhat decent volume. A couple that have looked okay in the past is something called Bandy. I don't really know what it is. Volleyball is always one that seems to have a decent amount of volume. And then Aussie Rules, which is kind of like rugby-ish, but different enough that we shouldn't really have an edge on it without looking. So now what we can do is we can come across here and we can see, okay, we've got Volleyball, Aussie Rules. If we narrow it down to one of those two, let's just have a look at this. So you can see these are very low again, 77 AFL. This is a spread sport, so you can see 200. So maybe AFL is worth a look. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually check another website just for their liquidity as well. So it looks like they haven't got the Aussie uh, rules or lines up, which is a bit annoying. They've only got the premiership winner, which is fine because the first game is on the 20th as well. So if we're this far out, and we already have lines that are here. By the time it comes around to game day, or the day before, we should get this up to about a thousand pounds per bet limit, which is going to be good enough and basically worth our while. So if we can build something that has ten percent ROI and has maybe one bet in four, something along those lines will give us a good amount of volume, which is what we need at a high enough ROI. So if we're aiming for, say thousand pound units, even though we could bet more by spreading it. Let's just use this for an example. Um, depending on the amount of games, if we're betting 25% of games at a 10% ROI, this is kind of like our goal to pursue a sport. Now you can definitely increase this, but usually what happens is your volume goes down. Okay. So yeah, you can increase volume, but usually what happens is if you increase volume, your ROI goes down. Or if you increase ROI, your volume goes massively down. So you end up being in this case where, personally, I would rather have a slightly higher ROI and a slightly lower volume for the same earn than vice versa. So if we're getting 20 units per season off of something like this, and we can get down one, two, 5K per bet, that's gonna be pretty good. So if we can aim to make 50 to 100K per sport that we look for, and it has the liquidity, which is the key, because if you can get a 20% ROI on 20% of the volume, for example, that's that's great until you can only bet a hundred pounds. And then it's like, well, what kind of like, what's the point of that? Because in each case, then your ROI or your expected value, sorry, is literally 20 pounds for the amount of work you're gonna put in both hours and, you know, literally just resources in some case, it's not even worth doing. So let's do let's do the AFL as our challenge. Um, I think it's going to be worth doing, and I think it's different enough that we can basically take a crack at it without any prior knowledge. And it's in this medium competition, medium liquidity zone as well.